hello and welcome today's video is going to be about adding a power module to a factory OEM CX20 APM version 252 version 5 um, I'm going to do a little bit something different this time and I'm going to probably start doing this in all my videos so instead of you guys having to watch the whole video I'll just show a picture of uh, the schematic or the drawings of how to hook something up and it'll be your choice obviously to continue on just pause it I can also upload these pictures to my drive so it makes it easier the reason why I'm only showing the end of the cable as well is because uh, if you got a power module for an APM 2.6 or a PixHox it doesn't matter how the other side is connected some manufacturers might wire it differently so I thought I would take that out of the equation so it'd be less confusing by only showing just the other end of the uh, pins it's pin for pin compatible it has to be because it has to be able to connect to any APM 2.6 or PixHox and that would explain why I do it all right so this guy here is a little messy okay. the first two pins on the left are your 5 volts the two at the very end are your ground you have uh, the C is for your sensing current and that goes on a second pin there and then V is for sensing voltage and that goes on that pin and the very last one is ground so the 5 volt in the ground is clean 5 volts so you can actually just uh, splice into two uh, a positive and a negative cable and plug that directly into the APM to power it just make sure you don't use the B cable anymore that's connected to your receiver on the CX20 and then here's another picture that's just a little bit easier to read just by the color code so red goes to red blue goes to blue black goes to black you have a choice between the two and your two first ones again are five volts all right so hopefully this is a little bit more helpful if you want to see how i did it it's a little bit messy but that's fine all right so i'll show you guys a couple of ways to wire the power module up to the cx20 apm so crack open this guy you just have to pull it apart like that carefully Again, I have these extra stuff, so you just have to ignore that It's for other projects. All right, the first thing I always suggest doing is grab a marker and color the board here and here, whatever color you want, or use whiteout to mark the two sides. This way, when you pull the board apart, you won't uh, put it back on backwards because this board can be plugged back in this way by accident. All right. So we're going to be working with the bottom and we're on this ADC. All right, so with this wire here, the first two here, if I can get it there, the first two are your positive, the last two are your ground wires, and the two middle ones are your sensing wires. So this one would be your current and this one would be your voltage. So the first thing you can do here is just pop out the volt. I guess you can pop up the ground too, actually. So let's go in order a little bit here. It can be a pain in the butt to get out sometimes. Okay, so the ground. So if you don't have the right connector, you can just push them in this way carefully. So the next one here is your volts. Now on this one here, I would just put a little knot in it or something so you can tell the difference between the volts and the current and just write down somewhere that not equals volts, no not equals current. So on this guy here, volts would be the one at the end.
Okay, so it's important here that none of these touch each other. So what you're going to want to do is get some hot glue and put a dab of hot glue right there. Let it dry and then you'll be able to fold the wires back up like this, around like this, and have the wires come out the side of the APM. All right? So that's one way of doing it is like that. The other way, obviously, actually is pretty good, is just to directly solder them on each pin here on the back side. Or also, I'll just get into that part too. If you have, um, if say, if your power board on your CX20 fried or something like that, and you want to use the volts out of here, just find one of these cables as well, like this, and then you'll have to cut the end just for the uh, positive and negative wire here. And on the wire here, the very first two wires are your positive, so you can pick either one. So pick the red one, obviously, because it's color coded. And then you, here's the ground wire. So then just wrap the wire onto this and solder them or whatever and then you'll just be able to plug this into the APM for power. That's if you don't have, if your B cable is uh, messed up. Alright, so I'm just going to put this back in and try another way of doing it. Alright, the second way is the same thing again. You need the three wires, the two at the end here, two first are positive, two at the end are your ground. So I still have the knot in here for my volt one. So what I'm going to want to do is switch these two around. So just pop out this guy. Take him out. And take out this guy. And just move him over to this one. And then plug this one back in here. like that. Alright, so I'm not sure if this part's going to work, but what my idea is here is to cut this piece of plastic so I'm able to plug it right into it because I don't have that cable. So if it doesn't work, oh well, so I'll just try with nail clippers maybe? Nope. Maybe. It's actually wrong there. I need to remove both sides. So it'd be actually better if I can somehow just remove this whole piece of plastic without breaking it. So maybe if I can just slowly wedge it out. You might be careful if you're going to try it this way because you might actually break these pins. Okay, there you go. Alright, so we're after the uh, these three right here. So we'll want to skip one when we plug it in. There you go. Perfect. So now what I would suggest doing is putting some hot glue here again. This way you can't lift it up and break the pins by accident, which you shouldn't anyways. So now you'll want to carefully bend these wires. Or even make a port on the side of the APM itself might be the best thing to do. Oh, that's a different wire. Okay. Yeah, there you go. So these wires might be in the way a little bit, but you'll just have to find a better way to come out. 
Ideally, too, you can just cut a hole here and have it come out that way. All right, so that's your two options. Maybe don't try cutting it. That was a dumb idea. Just take your time, and you should be able to move this guy out carefully. Or you can try cutting it. It's up to you. Okay, so I'll just sh quickly show you the mission planner settings, and uh, that's it. So again, before I say that's it or whatever, this, this one's your 5 volts, so you can actually cut this one and add it to one of these wires here, like this, and then the black wire on this guy here, attach it to the very last one, or the second one, and uh, just plug this guy into the uh, CX-20. But really, you don't probably only need the red wire, because it's already grounded anyways with this ground wire. Now I'll get into the mission planner settings. All right, so connect to mission planner. Go to initial setup, and uh, put on monitor voltage and current, and then put your amps for your battery here. For sensor, you can put other. For APM version, you can just put 3DR power module. You can alternatively pick 3DR module, but it usually just defaults back anyways. And if you want to do the settings and stuff like that, it's better just to go to other. So this way you can uh, tweak this stuff. Okay, go to, well, first of all, I'll show you this. Go to config and tuning. For a battery current, current sensing pin, it should be at A12, and this one should be at A13, and this one sh you can set to voltage and current, but really you don't really need the current anyways. You're basically only really after the voltage any anyways. But just put that for both, then then write your parameter, and then refresh your parameters, or unplug the APM and plug it back in. right so I'm going to plug in this battery all right so you have to wait a while for this to uh, balance out and see where it ends up at. All right, so it's saying it's about 11.97, and that's most likely wrong. So you'll want to go to, just remember 11.9. Well, see what it's gonna do here, see if it's gonna move up. So 11.99. So go to initial setup again. And this is what you're going to want to play with here. And you're going to want to change it. So we'll try changing this to a 2. All right, the reason why I know to set it to 11.2 or what the actual battery voltage is, is because of this little rat nest I got going on right here. So my meter here tells me that the battery out here is actually 11.22. I also have one of these little guys here too that shows me. So this guy is actually really off. It says it's at 12.22. Oh no, that's right. I mean, sorry. Yeah, 12.2, 12.2. And then here, I'll change it to 10.2 and go back to see what it's at now. So I'm still off here. See if it's done. Sometimes it'll move up slowly to what I set it to. All right, so we still have to move it up just a bit. Sometimes you might have to move it down or up. We'll try three. So again, just let it balance out. So that's about right. So 
So if it's jumping around at the end, about two points or whatever, that's actually not bad. So as long as it's 12.2, it's pretty good. Unless it's at 12.1, then it might tr jump from 11.9, etc. So anyways, uh, that's it for this part of it. I also hooked up a motor to it too, just to test the amps. So you can see it. But again, the amps are pretty useless here anyways. Because it doesn't really give you that much data anyways. And you can tweak the amps, of course, too, and to get a proper here. But personally, I don't really uh, care too much about the amps. All right, one more thing I'll also mention, too, is if you go into um, mandatory hardware and go to fail safes, you can set this now to low battery and then set it to do what you want it to do, return to home, land, and stuff like that. Return to home is a little bit dangerous in this way if you're at a park or something like that because it might crash into a tree or something. So sometimes land is just actually better unless you're super far away on a mission. And I'll add one more thing to this. I showed you guys a couple of minutes ago how to swap the two pins in the cable. That's probably actually pretty pointless because you could probably just change it here. Just change this pin to A13 and then change this one to eight, A12. And then uh, you shouldn't have to swap the cable around. If it doesn't work, then just do it the way I showed you. It's up to you guys. Anyways, uh, that's it. Hopefully this was helpful to somebody. Like and subscribe, please. And thanks for watching.